creepy encounter in the woods. The first video we'll be taking a look at today comes from a viewer named Pete, who early in 2023 found something quite unsettling during an otherwise routine YouTube video. While watching an outdoor-centered YouTube channel called TA Outdoors, the viewer watched as the video's host stumbled upon a place in the woods that could be best compared to a location straight from the Blair Witch Project. The host, known for his bushcraft and survival skill displays in remote, isolated areas of the world, found a series of skulls on sticks propped up amongst the trees. It was as if an ancient ritual had taken place on these grounds years ago, and had been left to decay in the middle of an abandoned forest. The host was quick to point out he only selected locations far from civilization or any known human contact. Whatever, or whomever, left those skull staffs, they had done so decades, if not centuries before he discovered them. It should also be said that the host of the survival videos wasn't unsurprised by the eerie enigmas littered throughout the woods. He hadn't ever seen something of the sort, and canvassing vast woodlands is his hobby. The hardened adventurer was quick to admit the creepy nature of the skulls, and admitted he was unsettled, after more and more Blair Witch artifacts were popping up. So what could explain the existence of these primitive, morbid revelations? It's possible the location of these skulls is the former stomping grounds of a cult. The appearance of the corpses, fastened to sticks, gives off ritual vibes, as if part of a sacred site where animal sacrifices, or worse, were made. Others believe the death-ridden land the host stumbled upon is filled with signs of witchcraft. There's always the potential for ancient witches to have used the woods for their sorcery. Could these artifacts be the remnants of a coven? And if so, could this coven still be active? It's hard to say for sure what exactly these discoveries are evidence of, as the specific location of our survivalist's trek is never clarified. While it's easy to assume it's somewhere in the UK, considering the host's accent, there is a chance he's camping somewhere else in Europe, or even in the United States. One person in the comments left behind the most realistic explanation for the skulls. They wrote, here in the States, several Native American tribes would decorate trees in the middle of their hunting grounds with fresh animal skulls, but it wasn't for anything sinister. It was a form of conservation. When you hunted an animal and hung its head up, you were telling the hunter what animals had been most recently taken from that area, so they knew to hunt something else and not thin out the population. Unfortunately, without precise coordinates, there's no way to prove these theories. The host from the original Bushcraft video obviously made it home to tell his tale. However, the next brave soul to venture to that neck of the woods might not be as fortunate. Bigfoot footage. In the eerie heartland of Washington state, something peculiar unfolded before the lens of a traffic camera. It was like the scene of a cryptic thriller with a dash of unexpected. The Washington State Department of Transportation played host to this peculiar occurrence when they tweeted out a series of enigmatic images captured by one of their surveillance cameras. The tweet boldly declared Sasquatch spotted while pointing out an enigmatic figure in the bottom left corner of the frame. The silhouette, mysterious and almost ghostly, resembled a human figure striding amidst the backdrop of towering evergreen trees. However, the details were shrouded in obscurity, rendering it impossible to confirm what the figure truly was. It might have been a hulking, fur-covered enigma, or perhaps a solitary hiker donning a hooded jacket. There was also the possibility, all but less thrilling, that it was merely a trick of the branches of a nearby tree. These mystifying photographs were taken on State Road 20 Sherman Pass, a sinuous route that navigates the Cascade Mountains in the northeastern part of Washington State. It's a spot where nature's secrets intertwine with the unexplained, and it's just about 70 kilometers south of the Canadian border in Grand Forks, British Columbia. This tweet, containing at least two photos, sent the curious minds into a frenzy. One image circled the figure in red, with trees casting eerie shadows on sunlit snow, devoid of any other traffic on the highway. In the second image, taken either before sunrise or after sundown, a vehicle with its lights on cruised along the highway, 
and the figure remained unchanged. As the enigmatic photo spread like wildfire across the internet, Twitter users chimed in with their theories and jests. Some wondered if this was a remarkably slow-moving Bigfoot, as it persisted in the same spot. But alas, the cryptid hunters came up empty-handed, and the figure remained a riddle. The world has long been intrigued by the possibility of Bigfoot's existence, with reported sightings scattered across North America's wooded landscapes each year. Washington State, along with its neighbour British Columbia, has earned a reputation as a hotspot for supposed Bigfoot encounters. Eager adventurers can join in the hunt by keeping an eye on the Washington State Department of Transportation's public traffic cameras, which snap new images every hour. The Bigfoot figure lingered on the SR-20 Sherman Pass camera for a whopping 48 hours, but as of today, its whereabouts remain a mystery. If you're in the area, keep your wits about you, for who knows what lurks in those shadowy woods. The Phantom Hitchhiker of Black Horse Lake Deep within the sprawling expanse of Montana, a land steeped in history and mystery, the treasure state reveals its curious side, among its cachet of eccentric tales. One that stands out is the enigmatic legend of the Phantom Hitchhiker of Black Horse Lake. This uncanny urban myth has etched its eerie presence in Cascade County, near the city of Great Falls, casting a chilling shadow on this picturesque region. Black Horse Lake, a gem nestled in the heart of Montana, is renowned for its beauty, yet the Phantom Hitchhiker claims the limelight. Our story unfolds on the desolate stretch of Highway 87, winding through Cascade County to the north of Great Falls, leading us to the Black Horse Lake area. This seasonal lake, normally dry, save for the spring and early summer, hosts a unique inhabitant, the most assertive phantom hitchhiker in the United States. The phenomenon of phantom hitchhikers has sprouted up across various states, but the Black Horse Lake apparition distinguishes itself with a lingering presence. Picture this. A solitary traveller embarks on a nocturnal journey along this lonely highway, en route to Fort Benton. In this flat landscape, visibility extends for miles. Suddenly a passenger in the vehicle glimpses a figure on the roadside. It's a Native American man, donned entirely in denim. His outstretched thumb signalling the universal symbol of hitchhiking. The driver steers closer, intending to lend a helping hand, but in the blink of an eye, the hitchhiker somersaults over the vehicle's hood and across its windshield, as if colliding with an invisible force. Naturally, any rational person's instinct would empower them to halt the vehicle and assess the situation. However, by the time they muster the courage to investigate, the phantom hitchhiker of Black Horse Lake vanishes into thin air, leaving no trace of his presence. The vehicle remains unscathed, devoid of any signs of impact, this could be brushed aside as mere flights of fancy, but it's no mere illusion. Countless witnesses have shared identical tales of this bizarre encounter, where the narrative never falters. Some speculate that the spectre may be the restless soul of a Native American man who met a tragic end, struck down by a vehicle along this very highway many years ago. Yet tangible proof of this long ago incident remains elusive, shrouded in mystery. Have you ever ventured to Black Horse Lake, crossed paths with the phantom hitchhiker, or heard this spectral tale whispered amongst the Montana winds? It remains a curiosity that continues to mystify, lingering in the hidden corners of the treasure state's intrigue. The Scary Story of Ruth Finley in the chilling annals of October's eerie mysteries, the story of Ruth Finley unfurls like a macabre tapestry of torment. Ruth's harrowing tale began in October 1946, when she, just a teenage girl, returned to her Fort Scott, Kansas home, found herself installed in a nightmare. A sinister stranger, his hands like cold claws, lurked behind her screen door, and an icy grip closed around her. In desperation, she fought back, 
thrusting her thumbs into his eyes as he tore at her clothes, and his fury swelled like a tempest. Her memory dimmed as he heated a flat iron on the stove, and her pain seared like fire. The local news recounted the assault, dubbing Ruth a victim of a sex maniac, leaving her haunted by the past. Decades later in June 1977, amidst personal tragedy, she was once again plunged into a living nightmare. A menacing voice on the telephone demanded money, hinting at the branding attack. This 47-year-old mother of two sons, whose husband had recently suffered a health scare, was now targeted by an unseen menace, who knew her past and her place of work. The sinister spectre from the past resurfaced, rekindling Ruth's anguish. In her office at Southwestern Bell Telephone Company, she received a disconcerting envelope containing a clipping about her long-buried trauma. As the ominous letters continued to plague her, Ruth and her husband, Ed, sought refuge with the Wichita Police Department in 1978. Their harrowing story unfolded at the same time as Wichita's infamous BTK killer was spreading terror with threatening attacks. A year later, after a nightmarish encounter with a shadowy figure during a shopping trip, Ruth reported being kidnapped and released, yet no leads or evidence surfaced, leaving investigators perplexed. Amid concerns that the BTK suspect might be her tormentor, Ruth endured five weeks of police surveillance, but the menace remained elusive. Her relentless pursuer, known as the poet for the gruesome rhymes in the letters, turned his malice towards the police. August 31st, 1979 marked a turning point as Ruth was hospitalized with stab wounds, the hand of the poet at work. The peril escalated further when a butcher's knife wrapped in a red bandana, arrived at her workplace, followed by a gruesome Valentine's message. Here's to you a tender Valentine, red with blood and tied with twine, nothing too much for a Valentine. Gone from here by whim of mind. In the grim shadow of impending danger, the Finley's Christmas was marred by severed phone lines, wreath fires and shocking deliveries on their doorstep. Copies of the poet's letters were sent to an expert Dr. Murray S. Mirren, who described the sender as a virulently psychotic loner. Though the poet bore similarities to the BTK killer, Dr. Mirren believed they were distinct entities. With more than 300 interviews yielding no suspects, Chief Richard Lamunyan's involvement in 1981 took a chilling twist. He summarized that Ruth herself was the poet and placed the family under surveillance. Shockingly, Ruth was captured on film, mailing one of the poet's letters to herself. Under questioning, she confessed to perpetrating the threats, kidnappings, and self-inflicting wounds, all while in the throes of psychosis. The investigation had cost the police department a fortune, but no charges were filed, as psychiatric examinations deemed her actions non-malicious. As the Wichita Eagle reported, Finley had unknowingly been tormenting herself as a result of psychiatric problems, stemming from a childhood of horrific physical abuse. Ruth embarked on a long journey of therapy with Dr. Andrew Pickens, unearthing the buried traumas that led her to create the poet. Her family's unwavering support and a desire to help others led Ruth to share her story with a local news program. She passed away on May 30th, 2019 at the age of 89, leaving behind a tale that serves as a haunting reminder of the eerie mysteries that lurk in the darkest corners of true crime history. Haunted Road In the eerie realm of the unexplained, a group of determined ghost hunters has unearthed a jaw-dropping revelation. They claim to have stumbled upon a spine-tingling audio recording that could rewrite the rules of the supernatural. Meet the fearless souls behind Retford Ghost Hunters, who embarked on a chilling journey through the Vale of the Paranormal. Their pursuit led them to Pac-Man Lane in Kiverton, South Yorkshire, a place notorious for its otherworldly occurrences, including sightings of ethereal beings and even mysterious UFO encounters. This road seems to be a hub for the inexplainable, where reality and the unknown collide. In an attempt to bridge the gap between the living and the unseen, the ghost hunters embarked on a live-streamed adventure to solicit a ghostly revelation. 
guided by their intrepid leader, Ron, who's known for his unshakable nerves. They sought to extract a name from the enigmatic spirit world, whispering into the night for answers. And then it happened. As they communed with the other side, their necrophonics microphone, designed to capture spectral whispers, picked up a response that sent shivers down their spine. Amidst the silent darkness, a voice echoed, the voice of an entity, distinctly proclaiming the name of the lane they were parked on, Pac-Man. Take a listen. The name of this lane. <gasps> oh! oh my god! Oh my god! god. Oh, you said Pac Man is. Their car sat motionless, no one inside it moved, yet the inexplainable had just transpired. A ghostly enigma had reached out from the shadows, and the team were left in awe. Viewers of their livestream quickly pointed out an additional layer of paranormal activity. A shadowy figure was said to have materialized, gliding across the car, defying the laws of the natural world. At first, skepticism reigned, but upon a second viewing, the evidence was undeniable. The shadow, characteristic of a spectre, rose from beneath the car, hesitating for a mere heartbeat before proceeding to move across the vehicle. Pac-Man Lane, it appears, has long been a stage for inexplicable occurrences. Back in 2005, members of the Sheffield Forum shared tales of unsettling experiences on the road, describing it as an eerie place that invokes memories of horror films. Some even recounted sightings of a spectral horse, dismissing suggestions that it was a mere illusion. Redford ghost hunters are no strangers to the paranormal limelight. Their previous claims to fame involved capturing a ghostly figure amongst a swirling vortex of vape smoke in an abandoned mill near Stoke-on-Trent. As we delve deeper into the mystery of Pac-Man Lane, it becomes clear that this obscure stretch of road is a realm where the living and the dead potentially merge, where shadowy figures and ethereal voices lurk just beyond our comprehension. So that's it for this video, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow for another creepy one.